Welcome everybody. We are here preparing series 119 in our historical matchup um, edition. We always use out of the park baseball 20. It is our favorite game, is the most realistic simulation and the deepest simulation. And we've been going up and down the history of the game, pitting two teams against each other to see what the stars, good teams and bad, can do when they're pitted against each other randomly. And this time around. We have, again, two new teams from two very different eras, and one of the teams is near and dear to my heart, but I'll get to that in a second. Let's introduce first the 1915 New York Yankees, who were pre-Babe Ruth here and struggled. They were 69-83. and 83. Uh, Bill Donovan, who was a player manager, was in charge, and it wasn't a good year for the Yankees. Uh, they were yet to establish themselves really in the New York area as a respectable team or in baseball for that matter and you can see here why some of the numbers hitting uh, not much power at all nobody of course had over five home runs which which is indicative of the era they played in the steals were there uh, Fritz Mazel with 51 steals and a lot of guys in the teens and 20s Don Cook with 29 uh, so the team can run but the averages just weren't there a lot of low averages Wally Pip had 13 triples, 20 doubles, but he only hit 246. And you have averages like Luke Boone at 204, uh, Roy Hartzell at 251, Doc Cook 271, uh, RBI leaders with 60, Wally Pip and Roy Hartzell. So the Yankee team that would become eventually the Murderer's Row was millennia away from that. Uh, they uh, really didn't have the uh, offensive uh, production even for the era they played in with the low on base and the low averages so uh, the offense not a huge threat here but the pitching uh, you do have a couple good arms here at least Roy Caldwell 19 game winner with a 289 in his 35 games started and Ray Fisher in um, 28 starts had 20 complete games 211 ERA very good uh, for Fisher Jack Warhop Boardwalk Brown couple other arms that you might see in action. Um, a lot of different starters used by Donovan. He also is in the mix there. He pitched in um, only nine games, even started one on his own, and he, at 38 years old, was doing more managing than playing. So the arms okay for the era, but again, it was the offense that really hurt this Yankee team, and that's pretty much why they finished fifth in the American League and weren't much of a factor. Boston, of course, dominating the American League with Babe Ruth during this time. Their opposition is from the mid-80s. It's the 1984 at least winning Chicago Cubs, a team dear to my heart because growing up in Chicago during this time, it's the first team that really introduced me to the game, the first team that really um, got me excited and got me uh, to follow uh, at the age that I was at that point in time, a, a young kid. So the Cubs... Um, you know, they made the postseason after 39 years, led by Jim Fry. Uh, they did come up short in the uh, NLCS to the Padres uh, after dropping the last three games of that series, but they did win, win 96. They were uh, all of the talk of the National League of that year because the Cubs had such a long run of bad baseball to turn it around pretty unexpectedly was something special. And they're led by their MVP of the National League, Ryan Sandberg, who had 200 hits. Scored 114 runs, 19 triples and home runs, as well as 32 steals. Sandberg, just an all-around talent, um, also with the glove. Um, you might remember the Suter game, the, the Cardinal game, where he um, tied the game up twice in the late innings. Uh, June 23rd of 84, I believe that was. So a magical year for Sandberg, uh, obviously supported here by some very good players. Uh, Ron Say's back there with 25 homers and 97 RBIs. Leon Durham drove in 96 with 23. He was also at 279. Gary Sarge Matthews, 291. Uh, he drove in 82, uh, scored 101 runs. And Bobby Denier at the top of the order, 45 stolen bases, 26 doubles. Uh, really a, a nice compliment to Sandberg. Moreland was all around the diamond. And Jody Davis, a great season for a catcher. 19 homers, 94 ribbies, and 256 uh, with his average. The big star on the pitching side was the acquisition the Cubs made uh, for Rick Suckler from Cleveland. He went 16-1, won the Cy Young, 269 ERA, 
seven complete games, three shutouts. Sutcliffe was just absolutely awesome in 84, um, just putting together a, a, a magical year. Um, he is, of course, supported by the likes of Steve Trout, who had a nice season, and Dennis Eckersley before his closer days with the A's. He was pitching here for the Cubs. He started 24 games and put pretty well with a 303. Scott Sanderson, also in the mix here, a very nice season for him in his 24 starts. And the Hall of Famer Lee Smith is the one that would close the door. Nine and seven for him. He pitched over 100 innings for a closer, which is a lot. Um, and ERA a little bit up there. And of course, they'll remember the claps in the playoffs. But Lee Smith, uh, very, very dependable at the end of ball games, uh, and was so here for the Cubs. So some other arms there you can see. Uh, Tim Stoddard, George Frazier, Warren Brewster, even Rick Rushel. But the Cubs, a uh, team that kind of came out of nowhere and had a lot of talent, uh, young talent for the time, even though it couldn't be sustained in the years following. So I'm going to be a little bit of a homer in this series because the Cubs are near and dear to me, but that doesn't mean anything really because we will play this out fairly. Best of seven. We'll start with the favorites in Chicago at Wrigley Field and then move over to the Polo Grounds where the 15 Yanks will host the middle three if necessary. So excited to get this one going. Two great franchises in baseball history, the Cubs and the Yankees. And game one is going to feature Roy, I'm sorry, Ray Caldwell up against the Red Baron, Rick Sutcliffe. We'll see what the ace of the Cubs can do against the Yankees at Wrigley in the opener. Um, so sit back, relax. Let's see what happens here uh, in our series 119 between the 1915 New York Yankees and the 1984 Chicago Cubs. We're live at Wrigley Field here in Chicago. We're in the top of the second inning with Patty Bauman facing Rick Sutcliffe. Here's the delivery, and this one's lined deep on a drive to left field. That ball's over the wall and gone. Home run for Patty Bauman. Unexpected for the Yankees, but they get on the board here first with a home run. Wrigley Field is not the biggest park in the league, so we might see some unexpected power, but the Yankees go up here one to nothing, and we'll move now bottom of the second with Moreland facing Ray Caldwell. And nobody out on the man on. This is hit to third. He's going to be made at second. Turn at first. Double play for the Yankees. There you go. Third, second to first. Two and any threats in this inning. We'll move bottom of the fourth with Sandberg at the plate. Still a one nothing ball game. Sandberg's going to line this one deep to right center. That's got a chance to go. That's going to drop in the gap. Matthews round in third. Matthews all the way in to score. Sandberg has a triple, and this is a 1-1 tie thanks to the triple by Ryan Sandberg, the right center. We'll move to the fifth now with Cook facing Suckliff and a man on. Which is outside, so Cook will take his walk to first base. And Hugh High, the hitter. With two on. Ryan goes back to the mound. Sutcliffe's got it. Makes the play at first. So the Cubs get out of the threat here in the fifth inning. Game remains tied 1-1. One to one. We'll move to the sixth inning here. Sutcliffe facing Luke Boone with a man on. One out. And Boone's going to lift this one just fair down the left field line. Here comes Pip heading the third. Wally Pip round in third. He's going to come in to score. And it is two to one now in favor of the Yankees. They take the lead here in the sixth inning. Only five hits in the ball game, and already New York has the advantage. Wally Pip hustling all the way from first base to get home and give the Yankees the lead. And Powell now up there with a the man on second. Powell's going to line this one to left field as well. That gets down. Run around third. Here comes the throw from Matthews. It's going to be late. And it's three to nothing. Yankees, they've opened up the lead here on the Cubs against Rick Sutcliffe. And it's three to one now. West New Newmacker at the plate with a man on second. Newmacker's going to line a single to center field against Warren Brewster. That's going to get down. 
It is 4-1 New York. They continue to surprise here in game number one. Al bottom of the sixth. Ron Say up there with Gary Matthews on third base. Say hits it to left field. That's got a chance to go at the wall. Goodbye, home run, Penguin. Ron Say with a two-run homer to get the Cubs right back in this ball game. Four to three now is our score. That ball just got over the wall in left. So our score now 4-3. Here's Jody Davis with a man on second. Davis lines a hard shot to center field, but a diving catch there by the center fielder, Mazel. He ends the inning with full extension and a catch that would have tied this ball game. Great play by Mazel. Here's Hugh High now. We're in the seventh inning. Still a one-run game. Warren Brewster on the mound. And this ball's lined hard in the left field all the way to the wall. Looking up. Goodbye, home run Yankees. Hugh High makes it a two-run game, an insurance run with the home run. Five to three now the Yankees. They got their second home run of this ball game. Bottom of the seven now. Here's some bit pinch hitter Richie Hebner. One out. Hebner hits a little squibber. That's going to be a tough play. He'll get on base here with one out. So Hebner makes it on here, and Bob Denier is the hitter. Near hits at the first play made at second for the first second out of the eight. And Gary Matthews now up there. It's a five to three game. Caldwell still in there. And this one's lined in the left field by Matthews. Denier's gonna make it to third base. Matthews with a big two out double here. And there's runners second and third. Two outs. And a big chance here for Sandberg. This is a two run game. Caldwell delivers. That's ball four. They pitch around Ryan. And the bases now are loaded. And Leon Durham with the biggest spot in this ball game. Two outs. Bases loaded. Two run game. Durham hits it to second. That's going to be played by Caldwell. And there you have it. Boone handles the play. And the two run lead remains. We'll move to the eighth inning. George Frazier on the pitch for the Cubs. And there's a line shot in the corner by Ballman. That's going to get down for extra bases. Ballman with a double here with one out in the eighth inning. First and second, two outs for Hartzell now. Hartzell is going to hit this one to right field. That ball is going to get down. It'll drop for a hit. New York scores again. It is six to three here at Wrigley Field in game one. The Yankees in full control. Jody Davis now facing George Modric in the bottom of the eighth inning with two outs. Davis will single to right field. The eighth Cubs hit, but still a long way to go for Chicago here. They got to try to come back from three down and we'll move all the way to the ninth. Marty McPhail facing Ryan Sandberg with two outs. 6-3 ball game. Sandberg hits it back to the mound. McHale makes the play, and the game is over. The New York Yankees upset and defeat the Chicago Cubs here in game one, 6-3 at Wrigley Field. They do it with two home runs, beating Rick Sutcliffe. Palman and High win deep. Gary Matthews 2-3 for three with a double and two runs for the Cubs. Caldwell gets the win. He pits seven innings with uh, three walks and a strikeout, allowing three earned runs. And Patty Bauman opened the game with a home run and then went two for four overall with two runs scored. Rick Sutcliffe takes the loss. McHale takes the save. Ron Say had a homer also for Chicago, but the New York Yankees of 1915 get off to the perfect start as they now take a one nothing lead in the series, beating the Cubs ace and looking towards game two now. Ray Fisher will face Steve Trout as the Cubs look to right the ship before the series moves over to Manhattan Island at the Polo Grounds. So let's see if Chicago can rebound or will the Yankees continue to surprise. It is Game 2 coming up from Wrigley Field in Chicago.
So here we go with game two, or bottom first inning. Cubs looking to get off to a good start. Leon Durham with runners on the corners. Wow. Durham is this one deep left field. That's the opposite field. That's looking up. That ball is gone. Three run homer for the ball. Leon Durham opens up game two in style for Chicago. It is three to nothing Cubs. Durham, who doesn't hit many the other way, got into that one. 379 feet. It is four to one Cubs as we move to the fourth inning. The Yankees coming back here as Newmacher's up there with two on. Out delivers. This one's hit to left field. Coming over to make the grab is Gary Matthews. They're two down. Then comes to no fruition for New York. Bottom of the fifth with Sandberg at the plate. And pull the pitcher. And Sandberg lines this one deep to left center. Looking up. Could be it is. Home run for Ryan Sandberg. Two run shot. Deep to left center field. Six to one Cubs as they've, as they've responded here in game number two. We'll move all the way to the ninth inning. Two outs. Rick Rushville on to pitch against Hugh High and a man on second. Seven to two is our score. This has hit the first. Durham is there. He takes it himself. The Cubs. End game two very quickly and efficiently, taking it without much of a threat. 7-2 to two, our final score at Wrigley. The four-run first inning really was the big blow and set the tone for this ball game. Leon Durham with the three-run homer early. Two for three with three RBI. Steve Trout gets the win with six very, very good innings, not allowing a single earned run with two strikeouts. Gary Matthews continues his good series with a two-for-three performance. And Chicago, with 12 hits, win the game 7-2, even though they made three errors. Didn't really make a difference. Sandberg also with a two-run home run of close to 400 feet. And this series now is all leaving at one as the scene shifts now to the polo grounds in New York. It becomes a best-of-five series. Chicago and New York all tied up. Scott Sanderson for the Cubs will take the mound in game three against Bob Schalke. Should be exciting as both teams have now picked themselves up with a win. And we'll see now who can get the advantage in the series. Game three always crucial. Coming up from New York and the Polo Grounds. At the Polo Grounds now, game number three of this series. And get the best view we can here. Top of the first, Leon Durham on the line. At second base, two outs. And Durham's going to line this one up the middle. There's a single. Sandberg's going to round third. He's going to try to score. The Cubs break out on top here in the first inning. One to nothing. Durham came through in game two in the first inning. He comes through again, and it's an RBI single this time. We need now bottom of the first. Puts Mazel against Sanderson. Runner on third. One out. Here's a fly ball. That's to left field. Matthews coming over. He's going to make the catch. Runner scores. Throw to the plate is going to be in time. The Sarge with the laser throw to the plate. Matthews gets the runner. And the Cubs preserve their 1-0 lead. What a throw by Gary Matthews. Bottom fourth now. Sanderson with that 1-0 lead. Facing Fritz Basil with one out and a man on. This one, however, is hit deep into the gap. Two left center. That's going to get down. Run around in third. He's going to score. It's going to be a triple for Basil. <clears throat> and it is 1-1 here in New York. The Giants come right back here with a triple in the fourth inning by Fritz Mazel. One to one is our score. Top of the, I'm sorry, we'll continue now. Bottom of the fourth. Wally hit back the plate with the infield in. It's a center field. Denier makes the play. Run's going to score on the sacrifice fly. Mazel comes home and the Yankees take a two to one lead in this ballgame. Top of the fifth. Gary Matthews facing Shockey. Matthews strikes out here with a man on first. Bamberg the hitter now with near on first base. One out. Bamberg goes deep to left. This one's got some carry. This one's looking up. And he's gone. His second.
second home run of the series, a two-run shot with Bob Denier on the bases. And the Cubs flip to the ball game in their favor. It's now 3-2 on the home run line drive by Sandberg. We move bottom of the seventh. Well, we've been facing Sanderson. Nobody out. He's going to single the center field. So the Yanks trying to get this ball game back into a tie or better if they can. Hartzell's the hitter. Hartzell goes to second. Sandberg's got it. Relay to first. Double play. Sandberg turns the 4 6 3. Here's Patty Bauman. Sanderson continues to pitch well. So Bauman's going to take this one to right center. That falls down in the wall. This is a good series as he doubles here with two outs in the seventh. Second pow is the hitter. Strike three. He looks at strike three, however. Sanderson gets him looking on the fastball and the Cubs retain. Of the eighth, Jody Davis facing Modric. Nobody out. And Jody singles up the middle here to lead off the eighth inning. Dave Bowen now the hitter. Four in the line, a single here to right field. So the Cubs got. The near now a hitter. And the near lifts this one to right field, but a catch will be made there. Second now. Gary Matthews now a hitter. Matthews takes ball four. Will the Cubs continue their threat here in the eighth? Inning? Outs, Modric with the pitch. All four, he walks in around. Modric walks Sandberg. Insurance run for Chicago. It is 42 now, Cubs. Durham now the hitter. And Durham lines this one to left center. That's going to roll all the way to the wall here at the Polo Grounds. Three runs come in. And the Cubs have opened this ball game up eight to three. In the ninth we go. Peckenthal facing Almentofano. And this is hit to second. Play is going to be made by Sandberg. And that will end game number three. The Cubs with a big five run eighth inning. Put this game to bed. Eight to three the final. The Cubs bounce right back after a game one loss to win two in a row. Sandberg with a big home run, one for three, a three-run bomb. Leon Durham with four RBIs, including a three-run double. Scott Sanderson gets the win. He pitched very well, seven scoreless innings. Shouldn't say scoreless, actually zero earned runs. The two errors the Cubs made did allow runs to score in the fourth, but it did not matter, even though the Cubs have made Five errors in the last two ball games. They've won them both and now take a two to one series lead and have the advantage as the favorites. Dennis Eckersley will take the mound in game number four against Ray Keating as the Giants look to respond here at home in game number four. And the Cubs look to pull away even further. So a crucial game again coming up here in game four. The Cubs with the advantage two games to one. Let's see if they're. Momentum continues, and the Cubs' hot baseball continues, and their winning streak continues, or will the Yankees turn things around? So let's head out to New York for game number four of this best of seven. So we're in the top of the first inning, game number four. We have And Durham hits this one to second. That might be two. Relay the first double play for the Yanks. 4-6-3 there to end the threat in the first. 
Thought it went a first down. Well, he spit at the plate against Eckersley. Two on. There's a fly ball deep to right. That ball up against the wall. It is caught. Throw to the plate. Not going to be in time. Fly ball all the way to the wall. We'll score a run here for the Yankees on the sacrifice fly. Here's Fritz Mazel with a cook on second base. That's a line shot to center field. That's going to get down. It's going to be 2 to nothing, New York. An RBI double by Maisel. We're into the fourth now. There's ball four. So say you'll get out here. There's only one out. Two on. For Keith Moreland. Marlin will hit the ground line shot to left field. <coughs> That's going to get down. The pieces will be loaded here. The ball was just hit too hard for the runner to score for Sandberg to round third. And we got bases loaded now. Jody Davis at the plate. Only one out. Jody strikes out in a big spot. Keating gets him swinging. Big strikeout on the fastball. Now the pitcher Eckersley trying to help his own cause. But he strikes out, and Keating gets out of a big jam here in the fourth inning. And the Yankees will hold on to this 2-1 to one lead. We'll move to the fifth with Sandberg up there and a man on and one out. Sandberg lines a single to right field. That'll get down there. So we got runners on first and second. One out for the Cubs. And Leon Durham, the hitter against Keating. Durham lines a shot to left. That's down there for a hit. Run around in third, but the throw's going to get there. Beautiful throw from left field. Matthews is out at the plate. High with a nice pickup. And the Yankees keep their 2-1 to one lead. Run, say the hitter now with two outs. They takes ball four outside. So the Cubs load the bases again with two outs this time. Keith Moreland at the plate. Keating delivers. Moreland hits it into the hole. Shortstop has it. Play at second. And just like that, they dig out of it again. The Yankees with two situations where they face bases loaded jams. Get out of it. Get, get out of it both times. Keating doing a great job. We'll move to the six with Peckinpah up there. Two out and two on. And this is hit past the first baseman. That's going to get a run in. Throw is going to be cut off. And New York adds an insurance run. It is 3 to 1 now. Yankees. Pepkin Paul with the big RBI there. 4 to 1 as we move to the seventh. Leon Durham at the plate. And Cole, the pitcher. Durham takes ball four on four pitches. So the Cubs have runners on the corners. Only one out. And Ron Say's the hitter. Say representing the. I ain't running this ball game. King Cole delivers. Ball four to say, and here we go again. The Cubs load the bases for the third time in this ball game. Keith Moreland up there again. He couldn't come through last time. Let's see what happens here. Moreland hits it back to the mound. Play at the plate, and then the first double play by the Yankees. One. To the catcher, to the first baseman. One, two, three, double play. And just like that, the Cubs come up short again. We'll move to the eighth inning. It is still four to one. He will win the hitter. Owen's going to hit this one past the third baseman for a hit. The Cubs have definitely had their chances. Davey Lopes now pinch hitting. And Lopes hits a little dribbler down the third base line. That's going to be a tough play, and Lopes will beat it out. So Davey Lopes with an infield single. Goddard, representing the tying run. There hits it to short. However, there is another double play. The Yankees continue to put out fires 
in this ball game have just stymied the Cubs all afternoon long. We'll move now ninth inning. Harry Matthews with McHale on the mound. Marty McHale looking for a save. There's a line shot to center field. It is the 11th hit for the Cubs, yet they still only have one run. One out here for Leon Durham. Durham takes ball four, so the Cubs again will bring up the tying run in the bat of Ron Say with one out. This one's lined to left. That ball's going to drop. Cubs load the bases here with only one out in the ninth inning. Rama again. Keith Moreland for the third time comes up with the bases loaded. Moreland hits it past the third baseman. A base hit for the Cubs. One run is in. It is four to two down. So Moreland finally comes through with the bases loaded. And Joey Davis with a huge chance here. It is four to two. A two run game. One out. McHale delivers. Davis will hit this one into. The outfield and a great play by the second baseman. Boom goes all the way in the right field to make the play for the second out of the inning. Dave Owen is the last hope for the Cubs. McHale delivers. Base is loaded. This is hit to second. Play going to be made at first and that will do it. The Cubs just unable to get hits that produced runs in the crucial moments and the Yankees hold on for a very fortunate and very impressive win. 4-2 to our final score in game number four. This series is now even at two. Ray Keating with a Houdini-like performance, getting out of a lot of jams, walking five, striking out five, but still only allowing one earned run. Doc Cook, three for four with a double two-run scored. Eckersley for the Cubs pitched okay, but he did walk four and allowed four earned runs. He takes the loss. McHale with the second save of the series for him. And back and forth these two teams go. We are now even at two apiece. Coming down in the best of three now. And the Yankees will look to get a foot up on the series as they play their last game here at the Polo Grounds. Ray Caldwell will take the mound again. The winner of game one against Rick Sutcliffe, who had his issues in game number one. But will have a chance here in game five to redeem himself. Series tied at two between the 84 Cubs and the 15 Yankees. Best of three now, and this next game at the Polo Grounds, of course, extremely crucial. So let's see what happens. We'll go live now to New York and the action. Bottom of the first inning, Suckliff now in another jam. It is first and second for Wally Pip, only one out. And Pip's going to go deep to center. That ball's going to get down. That's going to score one. Sutcliffe again struggling. Three to nothing as we move all the way to seventh inning. It's a no-hit effort by Ray Caldwell. Yet to allow a hit to the Cubs. But there's a line shot, and that'll end the no-hit bid. Gary Matthews breaks it up here. Durham now the hitter with one out. Durham hits one deep to right field all the way to the wall. This ball is up and gone. Home run for Leon Durham, his second of the series. So from no-hitter to two runs for the Cubs here in the seventh. This three to two now. Durham with a long one, 416 feet over the wall. Here's Ron Say now with one out. And Say hits one deep to left. It is back. It is gone. Ron Say has tied this game up. Back to back for the Cubs as they've come roaring back here in the seventh inning. Ron Say with a long one. It is 3-3 now here in New York. Bottom of the eighth. Wally Pitt back up there now facing George Frazier. One out. This is hit to left up against the wall. It's going to be another extra base hit for Pitt. He has a double now. He is in at second base. 
bring it to the air sport. But we're booing the hitter. Boone will hit this one up the middle. It'll get through. Here comes Pip Weld in third. He's going to score. And the Yankees take the lead again here in the eighth inning on a base hit by Boone. Four to three, our score. We go to the further into the inning with Mitch Hartzell. And Hartzell hits it into the gap and right. That falls down. That's going to clear the bases. Roy Hartzell with the three run double. Something the Cubs could not do yesterday. The Yankees have come through again into the gap. It is now 9 to 3, a six run eighth inning. Moving to the ninth. Dan Tipple now facing Leon Durham to close this one out. Line shot to short. Beckin Power makes the play, and the Yankees have won now. Two in a row. They take game number five, nine to three after West and out 13 hits. Rick Sutcliffe gets beat up again. No magic for the Red Baron in this series. Both of his games and starts were not successful. Caldwell, however, on the other hand, pitched very well in both his games. He gets the win after eight innings. Seven of them, or I should say six of them, were no hit. Hartzell one for one with that big double that cleared the bases and broke this game wide open in the eighth inning. And the New York Yankees on the verge of an upset here. They win two in a row and now head back to Chicago for game number six with the 3-2 lead. They can wrap things up here at Wrigley Field. We see Bill Donovan is injured, the player manager, but will not make a big difference because he wasn't used very exclusively. It's going to come down to Ray Fisher against Steve Trout. Can the Cubs hang on, or will the upset be complete by the Yankees, who've played very well in this series, especially coming through in the clutch and holding the Cubs off when they can? So let's head out now to Wrigley Field. Do or die for the Cubs. The Yankees leading the series 3-2, to two, Game 6 coming up. So here we go, game six at Wrigley Field. Gary Matthews facing Ray Fisher here in the first inning. And Matthews goes deep to left. That might be, it could be, it is on to Waveland Avenue. The Sarge. Gary Matthews with a two-run homer to get the Cubs up and running here in the very first inning. Put it up in Chicago. Here's Jody Davis, bottom of the second. And Jody takes it to the same place. Deep to left field and might be out of here. It is Jody. Jody Davis with the home run. Three to nothing Cubs. He goes deep to left field. And Chicago off to a good start here. It's three to nothing in the fifth. Lou Nunemaker now at the plate against Steve Trout who's pitched well. Nunemaker goes down the line and right. That's just a fair fair by inches, and that's going to get runners second and third here with nobody out in the inning. Doc Cook, the hitter. Trout delivers. Triple strikeout swinging. Steve Trout with a nice sinker. Hugh High now the hitter. And High goes down the line. That's a fair ball, and that's going to plate two for New York. Hugh High with the two run double. Making this a 3-2 ball game here in the fifth inning. Just past Ron Say. Down the left field line. Bottom of the fifth now. Ron Say hitting with the man on. Two outs. Say goes deep to right. That one's slicing, but that one's going to clear the fence. Home run for Ron Say. Cubs get those two runs right back. 5-2 to two the score. Say with another home run the opposite way, and it is... Now a more comfortable lead for the Cubs. We'll move to the sixth. Warren Brewster's come on the pitch. And there's a long fly ball. Deep to left field. Way back and up. Home run gone. Ballman, who's having a tremendous series, hits a two-run home run to cut the Cubs' lead to 5-4. to four. Bottom now of the sixth inning. 
Cliff Markle pitching against Jody Davis, who's already homered. And Jody does it again to the left field. It might be. It could be. It is gone again. Jody Davis home run number two in this ball game. The ball flying out of Wrigley tonight. It is six to four. Pumps. And Durham up there now. Bases loaded two outs. Durham lines a single to the right. That's going to get another run in. Two runs are going to score for the Cubs. It is now eight to four Chicago. Durham with a two run single. He's had an outstanding series. Nine four now as Gary Matthews is at the plate. Matthews will line a Little looper that's going to drop in the right. Matthews takes second as two more runs score. The 11 to 4 now comes. Their offense has broken things wide open. 12 to 4. A.V. Lopes hitting here in the bottom of the eighth. Lopes hits it into the gap. That ball's going to get down up against the wall. Two more Cub runs coming in. Lopes has a triple. And Lopes is actually coming home. Amazing! Inside the park home run by Davey Lopes. He rounds all the bases. A rarity indeed. He brings it all the way around for a three run inside the park home run to left field of all places. It is 15 to 4 now, Cubs. We'll move to the ninth. Altam Altamirano. Forgive the pronunciation. On to close things out here in the ninth. This one's grounded too short. Play is made by Boa. The Cubs wrap up game number six with emphatic fashion here. A win by 11 runs, scoring 15. Scoring in each of their last four innings. And they came out and refused to be Taken out of this series, Jody Davis, three for three, two home runs, three runs scored. The Sars Matthews, two for four with four RBIs, opened up the ball game with the home run in the first. And Davy Lopes, maybe of the play of the series, on inside the park, three run home run for Lopes. And 15 to four is our final in game number six. Steve Trout takes his second win for the Cubs of the series. Fisher takes the loss. And now, fans, we move to game number seven. An outstanding fun series has come down to the dramatic end. It's all going to be played out at Wrigley Field with Bob Shockey taking on Scott Sanderson in game number seven for everything that's at stake. The Cubs, who are the favorites, stay alive, but it comes down to one ball game as the Yankees try to pull the upset in the series. There's nothing like a game seven coming up. From Wrigley Field, 3-3 three to three is the game's tied in this series, and Game 7 will decide the winner. Let's head out live to Wrigley, Sanderson versus Shockey, for all the marbles in this best of seven. So all the play for here in Game 7, and the Yankees have come out well here. First and second, nobody out. Fritz Mazel is the hitter. He hits it to second. Sandberg's got it there. Turn the first double play for the Cubbies. And this top of the first inning is over. We move to the bottom of the third. Now Ron say up there. Two on, two out. Chalky delivers to the Cubs third baseman. This one's lined the center field. Will that drop? It will. Base hit for say. Here comes the first run of the ball game. Sandberg scores. One to nothing Cubs. They get on top here in the third inning. And Keith Moreland now, the hitter, trying to add to it. Moreland, a little dribbler in front of the mound. That's going to be a tough play. Moreland beats it out. So the Cubs now, bases loaded, two outs. Jody Davis, who was red hot in game six at the plate. And Jody lines it to right, but right there is the right fielder. Cook makes the play. The Cubs 1-0 lead holds up. We move now to the fourth. Hugh High is on base for Fritz Mazel. Nobody out. Mazel drives it deep to center field all the way to the wall. Looking up. Goodbye. Fritz Frazel. A two-run home run off Sanderson. And the Yankees take a two-to-one lead. A big blow here to center field by Mazel. Wally Pip now at the plate. 
program, Nuggets program. Pip lines it deep to right. That's going to get down. So Wally Pip is heading for third. Pip now with a triple with nobody out here in the fourth inning. As the Yankees continue to roll here in this frame. But we'll move bottom of the fourth. That'll be the near up there with two outs. Two to one ball game. Near will line this one deep to left field. That's up against the wall. Looking up. Goodbye, Bobby Denier. Home run, solo shot, just over the wall and left. And now the ball game tied at two. Bobby Denier took a pitch, full count, and shot it over the wall. We are tied at two. Here's Leon Durham. We move bottom of the fifth. Thanberg's on first. Nobody out. Durham hits it past the third baseman. So we got runners first and second for the Cubs here in the fifth inning. Ron says the hitter. And say will strike out swinging for the first out. So Schalke gets a big strikeout with the changeup. And here's Keith Moreland. Moreland looking to break the tie, but he hits it to third. Relay to first. Double play for the Yankees. The Cubs once again can't break through. And this game remains tied at two. Bottom of the seven now, two outs, say at the plate. Runner on first. And Ronnie Say is going to drop this one to right field. That ball will drop in there. Runner moving to third. He'll be safe. Leon Durham makes it to third base. So runners on the corners here, two outs. With Moreland coming up against Cy P. Moreland, one, two count. Here's the pitch by P. Strikeout. They get Moreland swinging. The Cubs cannot score the go-ahead run. And after seven, we're tied at two here at Wrigley. Tim Stoddard facing Roy Hartzell. Hartzell hits it deep to right. Could it be? Way to the wall. Hartzell with a solo home run to give the Yankees a crucial lead here in the eighth inning. Three to two. Roy Hartzell delivers a solo bomb. It's 3-2 to two now, bottom of the 8th inning. George Mordridge facing Jody Davis to lead off the frame. Jody hits it deep to right. That ball's going to drop. Davis heading the second with a leadoff double. So the Cubs in business here in the 8th inning. Evie Lopes coming up. Nobody out. Jody Davis on second base. This ball's hit deep to center. All the way to the wall. It's going to drop. Evie Lopes with a big double. He's been a hero here off the bench. And he ties this ball game. Wrigley Field on its feet. 3-3 three to three to score here in game seven after Davey Lopes comes through. Now it's pinch hitter Ron Hassey with Lopes on second. Great speed. Holdridge delivers. There's a strikeout, so Hassey cannot come through as the pinch hitter. Lopes now on third with one out. Bob Denier at the plate, who's already homered. Denier hits it. No second. Great diving play by Boom. Holds the runner and makes the play. So there are two outs now for Gary Matthews. Lopes is on third. Moendridge delivers. There's a line shot. It's going to be fair. Down the right field line, a single for Gary Matthews. Give the Cubs a 4-3 lead. And the Sarge comes through with a two-out two hit to score the go-ahead run. 4-3. The, the Cubs have come back here in the eighth inning, putting up two. Here's Sandberg with two outs. Sandberg will line this one to center. That's going to roll all the way to the wall. Matthews heading for third. He's going to round third. Here comes the Sarge. Beats the throw. Safe. Five to three Cubs. Ryan Sandberg with a double. That scores Gary Matthews all the way from first base. The 15th Cub hit. We'll move now to the top of the ninth. Two outs. Patty Bauman facing Lee Smith. Two outs. Smith delivers. This has popped up. Coming in is Sandberg. He's got it. And celebrations at... Uh, Wrigley Field as the 1984 Cubs have come from behind to win this series in seven games. Not only coming behind 
from behind in the series, but coming from behind in this ball game, putting up three runs in the eighth inning. What a series. What a game. 5-3 the final. Scott Sanderson was the starter, as was Bob Shockey. They both did not come to be part of the decision. They did not figure in the final result. Ryan Sandberg, 3 for 5 with a double and an RBI and a run. Bob Denier had a homer. Hartzell and Mazel did. The Hartzell homer, especially in the eighth inning, looked like it was what the Yankees needed, but the Cubs put up three in the bottom of the eighth. The big blow being the Gary Matthews, two out RBI single to right field that scored the run that put the Cubs ahead and allowed them to put Lee Smith on the mound and close the door in the ninth to win this series. The Cubs actually win two in a row, being down three games to two after the Yankees took game five. Chicago blew out the Yanks in game six, 15 to four, and took game seven in dramatic fashion, five to three. What a great series it was. Quickly looking at some of the numbers. You can see here, Hugh High had 10 hits in the series. Patty Bauman hit 240, but hit two home runs. Roy Hartzell, a homer, five RBIs, and was batting 500 for the series. He was three for six. Pitching wise, Ray Caldwell pitched very well. His ERA a little bit high, but he took two wins to his name. Struck out 10. Bob Shockey with the 375 did what he could in his two starts, allowed 17 hits, and was the pitcher on the mound, at least to start game seven. Couldn't come through. Cy P was the one that kind of let the lead slip in the seventh game. Marty McHale with a couple of saves, but also got beat around in some of the Yankee losses. Looking at the Cubbies, Leon Durham. With 11 RBIs in the series, hit 400 with two home runs. Ron Say, three home runs, hit 400. Gary Matthews, 423, five RBIs, and just about as clutch as it can get. Sandberg, 310, with eight RBIs. Davey Lopes, an outstanding performance, including an inside-the-park home run. Off the bench as a pinch hitter. Lee Smith did well in his two innings of work, but it was Scott Sanderson who pitched very well, including his performance in Game 7, striking out 9 with a 138. Steve Trout wins two games, and Rick Sutcliffe struggled a bit, but the Cubs were able to overcome it. The MVP of the series, they gave it to Ron Say. I would have to say it was Leon Durham. Durham with 11 RBIs, which is nothing to sniff at in the 11-game, I'm sorry, in the seven-game series. Two home runs, 10 hits. Scored five runs, also doubled a 531 on base percentage. A very good series for the Bull, but the Cubs had a number of stars. So there you have it. Harry Carey would be singing right now down Rush Street. The 1984 Cubs pull it off. They win this series in seven games, defeating the 1915 New York Yankees, who put up a valiant fight. Maybe deserved a little bit better. But in the end, it's the Cubs that pull it off and move on. Series 119 was maybe the best of the bunch, as we had a lot of excitement, a lot of great baseball. Really hope you enjoyed it. Out of the Park Baseball 20, bringing us all kinds of great series and performances and memories. So hopefully you're with us as we continue the march. We will see you again shortly. The Cubs, a 1984 variety, win this series in seven games.